Welcome back. The election in the United States now in the rearview mirror, but a wave of crucial elections in Europe are just getting started. The Netherlands put a damper on the populist wave this past week with its results, but now attention turns to France, where hardline conservative Marine Le Pen is currently doing very well in those polls. Those elections are next month. Germany also has elections in the fall, and Italy may hold elections as well this year. Sam Stovall and Bob Dahl are back with me, and I want to talk about these elections. First off, got to get your take. What does it mean if we were to see a populist wave go through Europe? And then, of course, we want to get the investment ideas throughout Europe and the rest of the world. Bob, how do you see it? It creates a problem for the Eurozone, no question about it. So, so we had Brexit, we had the Trump election, we had the Italian constitutional referendum, then we have these series of European elections in front of us. If we get the right-wing populace, if I can be extreme, um, the, the, the euro will come under pressure and probably collapse because Marie Le Pen, for example, probably going to ask France to pull out. I don't think her chances are good, and the Netherlands, I think, further amplifies that, but uh, this would be problematic for uh, Europe. Yeah, this, this is a re really important point you're making, because Marine Le Pen has been vocal. She wants France to get out of the Eurozone. Yes. And a lot of this has to do with the refugee crisis and, and other things. They want to just have their own borders. Um, but if they were to do that, the euro plummets. What happens? I mean, that's a major market disruption, isn't it? No question. And it would not be good news for the world, but it's especially bad for Europe. You want to keep your investments home if you fear that's going to happen. Uh, even as a U.S. large cap U.S. equity investor, I've got my money mostly in U.S. generated earnings, not so much in the multinationals. Not because I think Marie Le Pen's going to get elected, but because economic growth there just stutters. Yeah, let's talk about that. Sam, where, how, do you, how do you see it? Look around the world for us, whether it's Europe, Asia. I mean, a lot of these countries, particularly in the emerging markets, were the hot areas to be over the last 20 years. And then the last several years, they just can't get back on track. Sure. Well, I think it's, it's basically the old phrase of reversion to the mean. That if you look to the fact that over the last nine years, the S&P 500 has either exceeded or kept pace with the MSCI EFA to the point where developed international markets on a rolling 10-year basis are now rivaling their all-time low of February 2009. So as an investor, if you have exposure overseas, now's not the time to be getting out, especially when you look to earnings growth that is like three times uh, in the developed markets that you would see in the U.S. in terms of P.E. ratios being substantially lower overseas than they are here, and also looking at dividend yields are more than 50 percent higher overseas than here. But the reason is because people are worried. If the euro ends up... Uh, crashing, well, what's going to happen is you have a flight to safety to the U.S. dollar, which is going to slow our exports. And like tethered mountain climbers, all economies are linched together. And if we end, if they fall, they're going to drag us with them, and it's not going to be a good outcome. Isn't it interesting that even though valuations are so much better in Europe than they are in the U.S., um, there's still not an, uh, an appetite certainly on your, your part, both of you, uh, to go in Europe right now because well, of the fundamental backdrop. That's, that's the problem. As Sam points out, these markets are cheap, and cheap markets can have a big rally. And I think cyclically, that's okay if you want to play them. The problem is the secular decline. Undercapitalized banking system in Europe, the mismatch, one currency, uh, one monetary policy, but a different fiscal policy for every country. Most of the countries are having declining population in Europe. That's new, and they're following the way of Japan. So you might get a nice trade, but secularly, I think we're under, underperforming. But what about Sam's mountain climber analysis here? I mean, are you not worried that this is going to impact the U.S.? I think it already is. I think part of the reason the U.S. has had weakish growth, there are a bunch of reasons domestically, but one of them is our exports. It's hard to, hard to sell to areas of the world that aren't growing. Is there any area within the rest of the world, Sam, not the U.S., that you would recommend clients take a look at in terms of investment? Well, I, I think that the uh, emerging markets actually look pretty attractive uh, from a earnings growth perspective, valuations level, even on a dividend yield basis. One thing that is holding back is a lot of their debt uh, has to be paid in the U.S. dollar. So if we do find that the uh, euro ends up collapsing, then we are going to be seeing the strengthening of the U.S. dollar, which is going to hurt the emerging markets. But as Bob had mentioned, demographic uh, we do find that it's the emerging markets and the frontier markets that really show the greatest longer-term growth. And you have to 
feel like with the Federal Reserve beginning this new cycle of raising interest rates, that will be good for the emerging markets? Well, it'll be good for the emerging markets because... Because they're currencies. For their currencies, yes. Uh, also, just for uh, trade in general. But uh, And I also don't believe that they are looking to restrain uh, with the Fed still being quite stimulative, with my target being about two and a quarter percent, meaning as to where the Fed will stop raising rates, but also they're telegraphing their moves. I like to say that a boxer is rarely felled by the punch he expects. And everybody is expecting the Fed to raise rates because they told us. Yeah, well, you make a really good point. Two and a quarter percent is where you think the Fed funds rate ends up at after three interest rate hikes. That's not very high. So you're still talking about very low interest rates. Still talking very low rates. It's yeah. a doubling of where we are right now. Uh, but I think when you look to inflation itself, uh, even at a two, two and a quarter percent level, we're going to be in a stimulative environment because it'll still be slightly below that rate of inflation. You actually think the Fed tops out at two percent, even lower than where Sam is. Yeah, in, in that neighborhood. Not three where the Fed's talking about. That, that's where we differ with the Fed. And I, I, look, if the Fed goes to three, Either growth and inflation are a lot stronger than I think they're going to be, or they'll cause a problem. And I think they've worked really hard to keep us away from the deflation. The last thing to do is, is risk that by pushing rates up too fast.